Welcome back to SoftyMash. In the previous video, we looked at the interface. In this video, we'll cover the viewports and navigation. The viewports show your scene from different points of view. Viewport B shows a perspective view looking through the scene's default camera. All scenes in SoftyMash must have at least one camera. New scenes contain a simple camera rig by default. The camera is an actual object in the scene, as opposed to user views, which are just viewpoints. User views are similar to perspective views in Maya and 3ds Max. However, you must use an actual camera to render the final output in Softimage. The camera view shows the area that will be rendered clearly, and regions outside it have a darker overlay. The proportion of the renderable area depends on the picture ratio of the output format, such as 4.3, 16.9, or a custom value. The A, C, and D viewports are orthographic views, that is, parallel projections from the top, front, and right viewpoints. You can resize the viewports by dragging the horizontal and vertical splitter bars, or their intersection. Middle-click the splitter bars to restore them to the center. Clicking in a viewport makes it active as indicated by the light grey border. However, viewing commands usually work on the viewport under the mouse pointer, rather than the viewport in which you last clicked. For example, F to frame the selection, and A to frame all. You can maximize a viewport by clicking the icon at the top right of its title bar, and restore it by clicking again. The hot key for this is F12 in Softimage Interaction Mode, and the space bar in Maya Mode and it works with the view under the mouse pointer. Middle-click to expand a viewport horizontally. Control middle-click to expand vertically. Or right-click for more options. The Display Mode menu controls how objects are displayed in the viewports, such as wireframe, hidden line, or textured. You can align any view with the current selection. The X icon aligns the view with the right of the selection, Y with the top, and Z with the front. Click again to restore. Use the middle or right mouse buttons to look at the selection from the left, bottom, or back. The I icon opens the Show menu, where you can choose what types of objects and attributes to display. Here, and in other menus, you can press and hold the Shift key to keep the menu open while you toggle multiple items. For even more choices, open the Camera Visibility options. Here, you can toggle the global axes, which are just for visual reference. You can also toggle the Construction level, which relates to the construction modes and won't be discussed in this video. The Camera menu provides access to a variety of navigation tools and commands. Choosing a command like Frame Selection from here affects an individual viewport, while choosing the same command from the main display menu affects all viewports. This is also true for the object types and attributes available on the eye icon. The most common tools have keyboard shortcuts. For example, use the S key for the navigation tool in Softimage mode, or use the Alt key in Maya mode. The different mouse buttons perform different functions, like tracking, dollying, and orbiting. As indicated on the status bar, the information updates automatically when you press modifier keys like Control and Shift. Press Alt-Z to undo navigation, or Alt-Y to redo. Again, this works with the view under the mouse pointer. The memo cams let you store and recall up to four views per viewport. Middle-click to store the current view, and left-click to restore it. Right-click to clear a stored view, and Control middle click to overwrite a stored view with the current one. Another way to navigate is with the View Cube. The View Cube provides simple but consistent navigation in many Autodesk products. If you don't want to use the View Cube, you can disable it in your preferences. You can access the View Cube preferences from its own menu, 
or you can access all preferences from the file menu. You can mute a viewport by middle-clicking its label. This prevents it from updating and can be useful for speeding up interaction in complex scenes. You can also solo a viewport by left-clicking its label. This mutes all the other viewports. Click again to unmute or unsolo a viewport. You can change the view in a viewport from the display menu. Middle-click to switch between the last two views. You can also open views as floating windows from the view menu on the main menu bar. One of the views that you'll probably use a lot is the Explorer. It shows the hierarchy of your scene as a tree. Click the name of an object or property to select it, and click its icon to open the corresponding property page. The filters let you choose what types of data are displayed. You can also set the scope to show different aspects of your scene, such as the render passes, the current selection, or the whole scene. As an alternative to minimizing windows, you can double-click their title bars to collapse them in place. Double-click again to restore them. The selection panel has several specialized explorers that show specific types of elements. And you can open a mini-explorer for the current selection by pressing F3 over a viewport. So that was a quick look at the viewports, navigation, and some of the other views in Softimash. In the next video, we'll learn more about selection and transformation.